on the dawn of the 21st century, the college football world was transfixed on a vibrant, revitalized program in pursuit of a daring championship vision. For in the Grand Coliseum known as the Orange Bowl, there was a brand of football being played which continued a tradition of excellence born on that same hallowed gridiron nearly a generation ago. As has been the case ever since, the 2000 edition of the Miami Hurricanes would set as their ultimate goal to reach the pinnacle of success in college football. A pinnacle that would be within their reach for the ninth time in the past 18 seasons. The same pinnacle achieved on four prior occasions. For the Miami Hurricanes, the year 2000 would become known as the Drive for Five. The fifth ranked Hurricanes kicked off the 2000 campaign with a rare Thursday night opener and a visit from the Cowboys of McNeese State. The Miami offense moved at will, racking up 628 yards. The Hurricanes defense was opportunistic, grabbing three interceptions. And Santana Moss put the game away early with a pair of long distance touchdowns. 31 takes the snap. And somebody might have gotten a piece of it. Low line drive. Moss fields it on a bounce at the 23 yard line. Starts to his right. 25, 30, 35, 40. Moss over the 50. The 40 of McNeese. Yeah, Santana yeah. Moss, he is gone. Santana Moss with a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Portis and McPartland in an offset eye formation. Second and 10 from the Kings 25. Dorsey fakes the give, gives to Moss on the reverse. Santana's got a hold, 30, 35, 40. He turns the Jets on, 50, 40, cuts back, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, rock and roll, touchdown, Santana Moss. Running back Clinton Portis brought down the curtain on the 61 to 14 whipping with an 82 yard touchdown run. The dominance the Canes showed on this night would serve only as preparation for their first severe test of the 2000 season, nine days later. That test was a road trip to the Pacific Northwest to take on the 15th ranked Washington Huskies. The game represented a chance for Miami to stake an early claim to a position among the nation's elite. For Washington, it was a game that could serve as a springboard to a breakthrough season. Early mistakes plagued the fourth-ranked Hurricanes as Washington marched to a 21-3 lead at halftime. But Miami showed impressive resilience in the second half Dorsey takes the snap, he throws, wants Wayne, has it, a uh, juggling catch by Reggie Wayne, touchdown Hurricanes, had the ball, juggled it, reeled it in in the back of the end zone, and the Canes have their first touchdown of the day. Dorsey gives on the draw, Portis, angles right, breaks a tackle, 40, 45, he's at the 50 right side, the 40, the 30 of Washington, the 20, 15, and he's written down inside the 10 yard line, how about that, Clinton Portis. Takes the snap, hands off to Najee, running right, looking for the corner. He's in! Rock and roll! Touchdown, Hurricanes! Tuiasasopo with the shotgun. Kane showing blitz. Here's Tuiasasopo getting the snap. Here's pressure, and he drops the football! Oh. It's picked up, it's still loose! The Kane's got on it! Here Morgan at the 16-yard line! The man goes down after Morgan goes down, but the Kane's have the football! Jackson and McPartland in the eye. It's J.J. right side, has a hole five. Into the end zone, bring it up. Touchdown, Hurricanes. The 
Hurricanes cut the lead to five points entering the final quarter, but could not overcome the deficit. The valiant comeback effort came up just short, 34 to 29. Although perhaps not evident at the time, the lessons learned in this hostile environment would serve these Canes well. The valuable experience gained on this day would prove to be the catalyst for the season ahead. The frustration of the Washington defeat would quickly turn to confidence as the Hurricanes eliminated the mistakes while facing another unfriendly crowd in Morgantown, West Virginia. Miami's defense established the turning point of this game and the rest of the Hurricane season. First down, Mountaineers from their 20. Lewis drops back, throws left side, and it's picked up by Myers at the 20. Brings it over the 10, 5, into the end zone. Rock and roll, touchdown, Hurricanes. Leonard Myers' interception return for a score opened the floodgates for the Canes against West Virginia. Quarterback Ken Dorsey connected with Reggie Wayne for 38 yards later in the first period. Wayne etched his name into the Miami record books this day as the most productive receiver in UM history, setting a new career mark for receptions. Miami put the game out of reach with a big third quarter, highlighted by an interception return for a touchdown by linebacker Howard Clark. Philip Buchanan's 77-yard fumble return for a score closed the books on a 47-10 blowout victory and the initial step toward a Big East championship. Next up for Miami was its third consecutive road game, a trip to New Jersey to take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights on a brisk Saturday night. Executing flawlessly on both sides of the ball, Miami was a machine this night. James Jackson scored three first-half touchdowns and rushed for 118 yards. Quarterback Ken Dorsey completed 14 of 19 passes for 215 yards and three touchdowns. The Miami defense continued to display a fondness for the end zone, adding two more scores on a 45-yard interception return by cornerback Mike Rump. And a fumble recovery by Quincy Hips. Miami 64, Rutgers 6. And the annual showdown with top-ranked Florida State was now looming on the horizon. We're not going to waste 30 seconds looking at this film. This deal is history. As soon as we go on this plane, the only thing we're worried about now is Florida State. Let's get our ass ready to go. Let's go. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Miami's impressive performances in recent weeks had caused the nation to take notice. A once daunting game now had become an opportunity to show everyone that hurricane football truly was back. On Saturday, October 7th, the eyes of the college football world were on the Orange Bowl as the number one ranked Seminoles of Florida State were in town to do battle. Could Butch Davis's team demonstrate to the nation that they were indeed ready to stake their claim among college football's elite? Seventh-ranked Miami dominated the opening 30 minutes, holding the Seminoles scoreless in the first half for the first time in 151 games. Midway through the first quarter, the Canes struck first. Dorsey drops back, throws over the middle, caught Davenport, over the yeah. end, into the end zone, rock and roll, touchdown, Hurricane! Touch. 
Miami built a 17 to nothing first half lead on the strength of a 22 yard scoring pass from Dorsey to Davenport, a one yard run by freshman fullback DJ Williams, and a 31 yard field goal by Todd Sievers. Led by an impressive 17 tackle performance by middle linebacker Dan Morgan, the Miami defense snuffed out several FSU scoring threats, including one drive at the end of the first half. Winky throws over the middle, intercepted! Morgan, he takes it over the 5, the 10, the 15, 20, and run out of bounds at the 23-yard line with six seconds left in the half. Dan Morgan with the INT, yeah. turn back Florida State. FSU mounted a comeback in the second half, eventually taking the lead with a pair of touchdowns in the game's final minutes. Now trailing 24 to 20, with just 137 remaining. Preparation and hard work alone would not be enough. It would take character and courage to win this football game. Miami had one last opportunity. Fighting the Seminole defense and the clock, Dorsey and the Hurricane offense produced a drive for the history books, marching 68 yards in just 51 seconds. Dorsey completed six of seven passes on the march. Clutch passes to veterans Reggie Wayne and Santana Moss kept the Hurricanes moving. Second and five from midfield, Dorsey, five-step drop, throws right side, caught, Wayne, diving catch at the 33. Third down and four from the 27, Dorsey drops back, has time, throws over the middle, caught by Santana, 12, 10, down to the seven. The Canes are in business. Then, the sophomore signal caller from California, along with an obscure tight end from Oklahoma, instantly became figures of Hurricanes lore. Dorsey drops back, has time, throws over the middle, caught, On the game's final play, FSU had one last improbable, nearly impossible shot at forcing overtime. It's gonna be about a 50-yard field goal from the left hash. Snap is down, Bunyan's kick is on the way, and it's no good! No good. It's no good. right, it's no right. right, the Canes win! Yeah. The Canes beat Florida State, 27-24, my goodness! Miami 27, Florida State, 24. The Canes had defeated the nation's top-ranked team and thrust themselves back in the national championship picture. That's it, guys. That's why you do the sand pit. That's why you run in the mornings in the heat in the summertime is to be just a little stronger and a little tougher than that butts in the other locker room. Now ranked fourth, Miami had a week off to recover from its big win over the Seminoles. The only question was, would the Hurricanes be able to regain their intensity and focus for the resumption of the Big East schedule? Miami answered with a resounding 45-17 victory at Temple. Santana Moss busted loose for 241 all-purpose yards, returning a punt 71 yards for a touchdown. Then catching a 67-yard pass from Dorsey for another score. And the Miami defense added yet another touchdown of its own. Here they come. Scott dumps it off. Intercepted. Take it over the 15, 10, 5, into the end zone. And Reed with the pick, and he returns it for a score. How about that? Miami's ninth straight win over the Owls gave the Hurricanes a 3-0 Big East record, with just one more conference road trip upcoming.
Miami's final non-conference game would provide an unusual challenge. Louisiana Tech's wide open offense meant the Canes would have to work for their sixth victory of the season against an underrated opponent. For the Hurricanes, it was a workmanlike performance. James Jackson rushed for 185 yards and two touchdowns. Santana Moss scored on a 43-yard reverse. Then added a 69-yard punt return. They're clean. Here's Upton's punt. Moss makes the catch at the 31. Straight ahead, 35, 40, 45. Breaks the tackle, 50. Angles to the right, the 40. Right sideline, the 30, 20, 10, 5. Rock and roll. Touchdown, Santana Moss. One of the game's brightest moments was the return to action of tailback Clinton Portis, who had missed three games with a foot injury. Portis rushed for 87 yards in limited action. Defensively, reserve cornerback James Scott intercepted two passes, and safety Ed Reed added another pick to his resume, along with seven tackles. With a 42-31 victory that wasn't as close as the score indicated, Miami set the stage for its Big East showdown against Virginia Tech. Now third in the national polls, the Hurricanes faced their next game of major national importance as second-ranked Virginia Tech invaded the Orange Bowl on November 4th. With the eyes of the nation on this contest, only one team could emerge with its dreams still intact. The Hurricanes raced to a 21 to nothing halftime lead. Dorsey and Moss started the scoring with a perfectly executed 42 yard touchdown pass in the first period. High formation behind Dorsey, he drops back in the pocket, throws over the middle, Caught. Moss at the 10, over the 5, into the end zone, rock and roll, touchdown Hurricanes. A 42 yard pass from Ken Dorsey to Santana Moss. Oh, that was horrible. The Miami attack was clicking and rolling up 267 yards of offense in the first half. James Jackson extended the lead to 14 to nothing with an improvisational 17-yard scoring run. Dorsey pitches to Jackson. Jackson wants to throw it. He runs back to the left side. He's got room across the 15, the 10, the 5, into the end zone. Razzle-dazzle, touchdown, Hurricanes. A 17-yard run for James Jackson. Meanwhile, the Hurricanes' defense punished the Virginia Tech offense while continuing to show a penchant for making big plays. No shotgun, Vic behind center, eye formation behind him. Wide outs each way. Vic optioning to the left side. Jamal Green gets it first. Vic fumbles. The Canes have the ball. Chris Campbell recovers. Dorsey and the offense then capitalized on the opportunity. On third down, he takes the snap. Here comes the blitz. He throws short left. Caught Shockey. Breaks the tackle. 35 30 left sideline. The 25 20. 15 10 5. Shockey scores. The Cades pumps it in. Miami extended the lead to 28 to nothing in the third quarter on a 50 yard touchdown run by Najee Davenport. Virginia Tech trying to mount a comeback, the Canes put the game away. Dorsey takes the snap, plants, pumps, throws, long, right sideline, wants Santana, has a 35, 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, into the end zone, Santana Moss, an 80-yard touchdown reception. Senior calls for the ball, gets the snap. He's got time, gun 
runs over the middle. Tipped and intercepted. Taken across the 40, the 35, the 30. Back to the left. Ed Reed across the 20, 15, 10, 5. Into the end zone. Abracadabra. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Miami puts it away. Dominating in every phase of the game, the Hurricanes handed the Hokies a 41-21 defeat that was never in doubt. Miami was firmly entrenched in the national title hunt and had the Big East title in their control. One more step. We got four more to go. That's it. Our journey isn't over. This wasn't just about Florida State and it wasn't just about Virginia Tech. Those were only steps along the way to the top of the mountain, okay? Our journey's a long ways from being over. And it's still, it's one week at a time. It's pit. And there ain't nothing else that's important. Nothing. The rest of the season, BCS, polls, nothing, guys. It won't matter. You win as a team, and everything else takes care of itself. Three games still remain before Miami could clinch the Big East title and think of a possible national championship. And the Pittsburgh Panthers would not be an easy team for the Hurricanes to face just a week off of such a major victory. Pittsburgh boasted one of the nation's most diverse offensive attacks. But this Miami team is a mature one, a unit that is able to maintain perspective. The second-ranked Hurricanes approached this contest on a mission, and Miami took care of business against the Panthers in a 35-7 victory. Starting in place of an injured Leonard Myers, Cornerback Philip Buchanan started the scoring with a dazzling 71-yard interception return for a touchdown. A crushing block by helmetless defensive tackle Damian Lewis cleared Buchanan's path and made highlight reels nationwide. The Hurricanes were on their way. Dan Morgan and Santana Moss both etched their names atop impressive career achievements on this day. Morgan broke the Miami all-time tackles record and became UM's first player to record 500 stops in a career. Moss became Miami's all-time leader in receiving yards with a 100-yard outing. Dorsey threw for 264 yards. And the Miami defense stifled the Panthers holding Pitt to a season-low 266 total yards. Maintaining their number two national ranking, the Miami defense rose to the occasion in their final road contest of the season, handing Syracuse their first home shutout since 1993. The Hurricane D held the Orangemen to one failed trip into the Miami Red Zone. James Jackson led the way for the Hurricanes on the ground. Recording his fourth 100-yard game of the season. While scoring two touchdowns. Ken Dorsey also fared well, throwing for 263 yards on 16 of 28 passing, no interceptions, and a 32-yard TD to Reggie Wayne. With the 26 to nothing dismantling of Syracuse complete, Miami had one final hurdle standing in their way of a perfect run through the Big East. The one last obstacle standing between the Hurricanes and an outright Big East title and the possibility of a fifth national championship was the Boston College Eagles. Ken Dorsey tied a school record as he threw five touchdown passes, finishing the season with 25 scoring tosses and just five interceptions. 
The Canes' 499 yards of offense was in addition to their school record 201 punt return yards. Both Santana Moss and Daryl Jones returned Eagle punts for scores in the 52-6 blowout. Miami did what it had to do. Reeling off nine impressive victories since the loss at Washington, the Hurricanes were undefeated in the Big East and firmly entrenched in the number two spot in both national polls. All they could do now was wait and see if it was enough to get them into the national championship game. No matter what anybody says, you are champions. You're champions. Nobody will ever take that away from you. You are the best. We're going to get a chance, OK? We're going to get a chance. We did our part tonight. Everybody, stay focused. We're going to get this. We talked about it Thursday night. We're going to get our chance, guys. Believe it. Despite being ranked second in the Associated Press and coaches' polls, and having defeated teams ranked first and second in those polls during the season, the BCS computers kept Miami out of the National Championship Orange Bowl game. But a win over the sixth-ranked Florida Gators in the Nokia Sugar Bowl would keep the Hurricanes' hopes alive for a national championship in the AP rankings, pending an Oklahoma loss to Florida State in the Orange Bowl. The Canes and Gators would renew a bitter rivalry that had been put on hiatus since 1987. The 50th meeting between the two schools was the first time they had been paired in a bowl game. After Florida jumped out to an early 7-0 lead, Miami answered with a 44-yard Todd Seavers field goal. Then. Ken Dorsey engineered a textbook 10-play, 66-yard drive to take the lead. On third and goal from the eight. Dorsey drops back, throws over the middle, caught, shocking across the goal line, rock and roll, touchdown, Hurricanes! Dorsey to Shockey, and the Canes take the lead over Florida. Late in the first half, with Miami up 13 to 10, the defense came up with a big play to thwart a Gator scoring threat. Grossman under center, gets the snap, back to pass, pops, fires, right side of the end. Oh, intercepted! Leonard Myers brings it out across the 5, 10, 15, cuts back 20, 25, and he stumbles down at the 30-yard line. Leonard Myers turns back the Gators. Wow, that was a gigantic play. After a rare Dorsey interception, the Gators took the lead in the third quarter. However, it was a lead that proved to be short-lived. The Hurricanes began to take control of this game with a methodical 12-play, 80-yard drive to regain the advantage. The drive culminated with a pass from Dorsey to freshman fullback D.J. Williams. Second and 10 at the Florida 20. Dorsey at her center, drops back in the pocket. Fires, left side, caught DJ Williams across the goal line, bring it up, touchdown Hurricanes! After the Miami defense forced a Gator punt, junior Daryl Jones would set the offense up with a 43-yard punt return to the Gator 23. Miami took command with Dorsey's third touchdown pass. Offset eye formation, Davenport and Williams. Dorsey fakes the give, rolls to the right, throws in the corner, and it's it. caught. He got it. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Oh, what a great catch by Knight Jay Davenport. The Hurricane defense stiffened, and Miami held a 10-point advantage in the fourth quarter. Philip Buchanan's interception of Rex Grossman set the Canes up at the Florida 21-yard line. Najee Davenport surged three yards to the end zone to give the Canes a commanding 17-point advantage. The Gators were done. Dan Morgan's career at Miami ended in fitting fashion with an interception in the game's closing moments to keep Florida from a meaningless touchdown. 
Second and four from the 11, a throw over the middle. Intercepted by Dan Morgan. He brings it out over the 5, 10, 15, 20, and he's tackled at the 25-yard line. Dan Morgan, what a way for him to end his career as he stops this game, and the Canes are going to win the Sugar Bowl. The 37-20 victory over Florida coupled with their earlier 27 to 24 win over Florida State, assured Miami of the State of Florida championship for 2000. Their hopes of sharing a national championship, ironically, now rested with Florida State's performance in the Orange Bowl. Even though their destiny had been wrested from their grasp, nothing could take the luster off of the Hurricanes' convincing Sugar Bowl victory over the Gators or their stellar 2000 season. It's a great deal of pleasure to present to you the championship trophy for the 2001 Nokia Sugar Bowl. Congratulations. Yes, Although the BCS computer denied Miami a spot in the national championship contest in the Orange Bowl, it could not dampen the accomplishments of the 2000 Hurricanes. Their 11-1 record was the best in Coral Gables since 1992 and their nine-game winning streak included victories over teams ranked number one and number two during that stretch. When Miami's offense got its hands on the ball, it literally exploded. The 506 points recorded by the Canes in 2000 set new school and Big East Conference single-season marks. Several Canes established themselves as some of the best ever to wear a Hurricane uniform. Quarterback Ken Dorsey smashed a school record with 193 consecutive pass attempts without an interception. Safety Ed Reed's eight interceptions was the most recorded by a Hurricane since 1986. James Jackson became the fourth player in UM history to surpass 1,000 yards rushing in a single season and finished second all time in career rushing yardage. Reggie Wayne established a new school record for career receptions with 176. Santana Moss set a new school record for career receiving yards with 2,635 and established a Miami mark for all-purpose yards, totaling 4,441 for his career. And Dan Morgan established new school and Big East records for career tackles while becoming one of Miami's all-time legendary defenders. Morgan became the first player in the history of college football to sweep the Bronco Nagurski and Chuck Bednarik awards for the best defensive player in college football, along with the Dick Butkus Award as the nation's top linebacker. Morgan was part of a legendary Hurricane senior class credited with reestablishing the program among the nation's elite. These nine defenders and eight offensive players in the class of 2000 have paved the way for the future success of the program. That immediate future lies in the capable hands of returning players who have tasted the success of 2000. <laughs>